you want to introduce us? Yes, Dad. Um, my name is John. You're my partner, my dad, Mark. We are John's Crazy Socks. John's Crazy Socks. What's our mission? Spreading happiness. Are yeah, you ready to spread some happiness today? Yes, I am. And I want to make sure people know about my partner here. You're an entrepreneur? Yes, I am. Let's see. You're a sock tycoon. Yes. You're a public speaker. Yes, I am. You are a philanthropist. Yes. You're a dancer. Yes. <laughs> An athlete. Yes, I am. You're a good friend. Yes. You're a boyfriend. Yes, I'm very smooth. Very smooth. Huh? You're all these things, and you happen to have Down syndrome. I do. I have Down syndrome. Down syndrome never holds me back. No, it does not. <laughs> and so, how did we get started? Well, our story starts in a small log cabin in the woods. No, it's no. Not. Our story starts in suburban in the suburbs of New York City, in a town called Huntington, out on Long Island, outside New York City. Um, it's the fall of 2016, and where were you? I, I was at. A- Huntington High School. It's going to be my last day of school. John is in local public high school. Like you said, it's going to be the last year of school. So he's trying to figure out what do I do next? What comes next? And what were you looking at? I like a job program in school. I don't like that. I'm not a job. He didn't say anything he liked. And this is true in the U.S. and in the U.K. There just aren't enough opportunities for people with differing abilities. But John, you're a natural entrepreneur. Yes, I am. If you didn't see a job you wanted, what do you say? I said I want to create one. I want to make one. You were just gonna make a job. What did you tell me? I I said I want to go into business with my dad and nice fellows that business together. Okay. So you tell me that, right? And now we have to come up with an idea. What sort of business are we going to run? And entrepreneurs have a lot of ideas. You had a lot of ideas, didn't you? Right. And some of them are even good ideas. <laughs> What was one of your ideas for a business for us? One of them is a food truck. A food truck. Yes. Um. Um. I saw the movie Chef and John Favreau. That movie about a father and son, a a a buying a food truck. Yeah, so a food truck that sounded like a fun idea, and we would think, what could we make? Where would we put it? But we ran into a problem. Oh, we can't cook. Yeah, we can't cook. So <laughs> it wasn't going to be a food truck, was it? No. Then, right before Thanksgiving here in the U.S., so the end of November. You had your eureka moment. What do you tell me? I I said I want to sell crazy socks. White socks. It's fun. It's colorful. It's creative. It'll always let me be me. Yes, John had worn these crazy socks his whole life. We used to drive around looking for them. Right. So here's what we figured: if John loved those socks that much, surely other people would too. And we could find our tribe. So at that point, we went what you could call the lean startup route. We just wanted to get something up and running and see how customers would respond. So you already had the name. I yeah, I got a name. I got a website. Come out here. You. We built a a website. We got a little bit of inventory, and we were bootstrapping, so we didn't have any outside money. And that means you have to make do with whatever resources you have. So the only marketing we did, and, and marketing is how you let other people know what products or services you have that they may want. The only marketing we did was to set up a Facebook page, and I took out my cell phone and we made videos. And who was in those videos? I am.、Uh, I talk about socks, 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 more socks. <laughs> And we noticed people started watching those videos and sharing them. And what day did we open? We opened, we opened on a Friday, 
D79, 2016. And we didn't know what to expect, but we were very fortunate. And that first day, we got 42 orders. And most of them were local. And that made sense. We lived in the town of Huntington. You were at Huntington High School. We had a temporary office there. So what did you decide to do with those first orders? I, I do a home service. We, we get a red box like this. We got these red boxes. Yep. We put socks in the box. I put socks. And we looked at the box and said, that needs something else. Right. And I put a dick in your uh, arrow and I put a candy. I put a big of kisses. Yeah, we got, you know, those little chocolate pieces and we poured them into the boxes, filled them up, loaded up the car, and drove around, and you knocked on doors delivering the socks. Yes, we did. How the customers respond? Customers loved it, and our customers took a, a picture, share on social media, a, a, a word against us. Yeah, we had people ordering just to come back just have John come back to their door. They loved having you show up, right? right? And there were some nights we were out at 10 o'clock at night and you were knocking on doors saying, just John with your socks. Right. That was fun, huh? It's so much fun. That's how we got started. And by the end of that month, really two weeks, we had shipped 452 orders. And we knew we had something that we could grow this business. So that's how we got started. Well, we faced the same challenges that any small business did. It was just the two of us. So we had to do everything and there's a lot to learn. And there are always some things that will go wrong. You know, on the first day, what time were we going to open? A little bit of a time on. 10 a.m. But what happened? A website crashed. I did all my dad. The website crashed because our webmaster, and that was me, screwed something up in the code. So the website crashed. We didn't open till three in the afternoon. Right. Um, we had little bumps that came like that. And, and here's the thing. If, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're going to run a business, it's not a question, will things go wrong? It's only a question of when. And then you always have to figure out how to overcome them. So you know, some of the initial challenges, we, um, we struggled to get inventory to sell because we were selling other people's socks. Right. And the suppliers were telling us, we're not going to sell to you until you show us that you have customers. Well, how could we show them we had customers if we had no inventory to sell? So we had to overcome that hurdle. Um, three months in, we had our first viral experience and watch what you ask for, you may get it. Um, we had, there was a video someone made about us that went viral. And last I looked, it had over 20 million views. So we went from doing maybe 40 orders a day to over a thousand orders. And that really rocked us, right? Right. We had to scramble to get inventory. We had to hire staff. We had to get more equipment all right away. So there were many challenges of getting started to grow the business, yes. But, but here's the thing, none of those challenges were related to John having Down syndrome. You were an active participant from the beginning. You did lots of different things from the beginning, right? You helped pick right. orders, pack orders. Yes. You did the deliveries, you did the videos, you were the face of the business. Yes, I am. You wrote the handwritten notes. Right. And like any small business owner, you do a little bit of everything, so you would take the garbage out. <laughs> None of the obstacles were related to John having Down syndrome. They were just the, the challenges that any small business might face. My favorite part is I'm doing a home deliveries 
Biggie Gets Met podcast um, interviews. Um, I like doing videos. I like to, uh, uh, I like to TikTok. I like to uh, uh, help me out picking orders. I like having out keep rapping. Um, I like. Um, so you're listing everything you do. Yes. <laughs> I guess you like it, huh? Yes, I like to hear comments out. <laughs> John, they used to say about uh, the singer James Brown that he was the hardest working man in showbiz. Well, John here is the hardest working man in Sockdom. Uh, you do a lot of things and you like it, don't I you? I do. Right? Uh, I'll tell you an anecdote about John. There was a time we had participated in a fundraiser for the Special Olympics. Um, we do a lot of, we, we raise a lot of money for the Special Olympics and donate to them. And you're a Special Olympic athlete. Yes, I am. So we were at this fundraiser in New York City, in Manhattan. And it was a young professional fundraiser, a lot of uh, Wall Street types and very hot club. Uh, you had a lot of fun. Yes. But, but we didn't get home till three in the morning. And I told John, why do you just sleep in tomorrow? You haven't had a day off in <laughs> ages. It was okay. He stays in. I get up, I come to the office. Well, about 10 a.m., who comes walking in? It's John. I said, what are you doing? He says, I took an Uber to the office. I have things to do. <laughs> we are always trying to make the argument really demonstrate that hiring people with differing abilities is not altruism, but it's good business. So what we try to do every day, we want to lead a great business and we want great employees. We have found that to, to do that, we need to consider everybody. So we hire people with differing abilities We've been able to create 34 jobs. Yeah. 22 of those are held by people with different abilities. And be clear, we don't lower our standards. We're not doing anybody a favor. Right. Everybody who works here has earned their job and everybody produces. We are better off because of that inclusion and that diversity. So it's good business. And then we want others to see this. We want to show the world. So what's our mission? I spend heaven. But a key part of that is showing what people with different abilities can do. So what do we do about that? We want to show other employers and policymakers why it's good business to hire people with different abilities. But we also work to show students and individuals that have a different ability, that we need them, that there are job opportunities out there and entrepreneurism is an option for folks. Right. We do a lot to make that happen. So how do we do that? We start with our business. We start with whom we hire and how we work. We've created a unified workplace right. where people with differing abilities work side by side neurotypicals. We see the benefits. It leads to great morale, better productivity, better retention, and it helps us recruit people. And we want to share that. So we host school tours. Right. And, and social service agencies come in with tours. We host work groups from schools and social service agencies. So we're able to give people some experience of what it's like to have a job. We do a lot of speaking events. Yeah. We'll go and talk at schools. We talk at colleges and universities and at corporate events to go out and show Look what our business is doing. Look at the opportunities. Look what people can do. Every time you stand in front of an audience, I think you help change people's minds. Right. Make people aware. Whoa, 
I didn't know people with Down syndrome can own a multi-million dollar business, huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we do advocacy work. So here in the U.S., we have testified twice before the U.S. Congress. We've spoken at the United Nations. We meet with legislators all the time advocating for the rights of people with different abilities. There's nothing we do here that is the proverbial rocket science. Mm -hmm. It's common sense and everybody can do it. And at the end of the day, we're just a couple of knuckleheads selling socks. Right. Mm -hmm. All we want to do and should, and should do well. just change the world. Part of what we show is if we can do this, other people can do it too. We meet with large companies. We were down with a staffing company on, on Thursday. We're meeting with more businesses later this morning on, a, on an advisory council. We're a small business with limited resources. We have no government support. We have no government funding, no special programs. And yet we're able to do this. So larger companies with more resources, they can do it too. We want everyone to have an opportunity to contribute. We want to live in a world where we're not blinded by someone's limitations, but we're awed by their possibilities. We want to live in a world where the achievements of people like John, people with Down syndrome, people with autism, are no longer remarkable. Consider this. If you go to your local Starbucks, or if we're in the UK, if you go to your local pub, and somebody with Down syndrome is working there, you're likely to say something about that. You're likely to remark on that because it's remarkable, it stands out. We want to get to a point where it's no longer remarkable, where it's just common, it's part of what happens. It's, we want to knock down the barriers that keep people with differing abilities out, that keep them separated so that we are all able to engage and contribute. You know, parents with a child with a disability, you hear oftentimes, oh, God only gives a burden or a challenge to those who can handle it. Well, first of all, my son is not a burden. This is my boy. Second, John has made us better parents and better people. We are the ones that benefit. So it's not him changing as much as us learning and changing. And, and I'll apply that in a business world. Um, you know, it's not just small companies like ours, but, you know, take this software company out in Redmond, Washington. Uh, you may have heard of them. They're called Microsoft. <laughs> so... They are in fierce competition recruiting uh, uh, technical workers, programmers. And they recognize that many people with autism have these skills, but they say to themselves, how come we're not hiring anybody uh, with autism for these jobs? Well, the answer was easy. It's because many of those folks, while, while capable, couldn't get past the interview. Maybe they didn't look you in the eye or give you a firm handshake. Well, Microsoft learned. They had to change. So they changed their hiring process. Now they hire lots of people with differing abilities, lots of people with autism. And that gives them a competitive advantage. That helps Microsoft. But the, what, what they had to learn was they had to change. From our perspective, it's hire the best people you can. And that means you cannot exclude any group 
for artificial reasons. When you do that, you're going to focus on what people can do and can't do. And that's going to, you're going to then see the benefits, the benefits that you're able to fill jobs you otherwise could not fill the benefits of having people with differing points of view that will help you. I mean, I'll give you two concrete examples in our business. One, there's a growing labor shortage. In many parts of the US, it's very difficult to find enough workers. I listen to other business owners all the time say, I can't find people. We have no trouble filling our jobs. We have a surplus of good candidates because we tap into this great resource of people with different abilities. And you know, much of what we do here is run a pick and pack warehouse because we do our own fulfillment. Orders come in, you gotta pick them, you gotta pack them, you gotta send them out. So over the years, and we're now in our sixth year of business, we've drawn from three labor pools, people with different abilities, moms, there's some dads in there because we, we schedule people in four hour shifts. So you could put your kid on the bus in the morning to go to school, come to work and be home in time to pick your kid up after school. And, and then regular laborers who are looking for a $15 an hour job. By far, the labor pool for us are people with different abilities. So you know, one lesson there and want to show people, this is how you can find great workers. But let's also talk about diversity. So we sell socks, right? Right. And how many different socks do we have? We have 4,000 different kinds of socks. It's 4,000 different socks. That means John here owns the world's largest sock store. We want to have great selection for people. Well, to do that, we have a diverse audience. We need to have a diverse group of people picking those socks. So everybody here helps pick socks. And the more diverse our audience, the better we are able to do that. You know, the more diverse our workforce, the better we are able right. to do that, right? So we're, we're very big on show, don't tell. The more that businesses see us, the more that individuals come in and see, you know, the possibilities for themselves, the more likely they'll be able to go forward. My advice, follow your heart, follow your dreams. That's pretty good advice. I, I'd say you have to believe, you have to know what you're about and you have to believe. Things will be tough sometimes, but as long as you know what you're about and believe, it will be okay. <laughs>